welcome back to Drag Duel. My name is Butsy. I'm Derek. And my earrings are gone. This week, we asked our contestants to present their marketing skills in a commercial success marketing challenge. The warriors were asked to create their own iconic product and market it to us and to you in an unforgettable and entertaining one to two minute commercial. This is a branding challenge, not a comedy challenge, wonk wonk. So we asked them to market themselves and present who they are in the best way possible. Oh God, oh God. The product they're presenting could be literally anything. It can be a toothbrush for Derek, for all we care. It just needs to make sense with who they are. And on the runway, category is as seen on TV. That's right, our warriors have to present a cosplay look of their favorite television or film character. But first, let's check in with Derek to get the results of the last week's side quest. For last week's side quest, we had all of our warriors lip sync to iconic television commercials. Now you guys voted for our winner, but let's go over our top three vote getters first. They are Orbit, Titanic Donovan, and Tyler Nall. But there can only be one winner, and our winner, who will receive 25 USD, is... Orbit, congratulations Orbit on your first side quest win of the season. And now let's check in with our warriors leading into this challenge where things are going wrong, things are kind of intense, and, and for the first time all season, it got so hectic that we had to take off points from multiple of our contestants. So let's see how all of that unfolded right now. Tyler and I had thought of a very similar product and Tyler had wanted me to change it. So I originally was, I spent two days making a new product, writing a script. I just was not feeling it. And in this competition, even though I really want to be there for my friends, for my, my drag brother, I really got to put myself first. And so I decided to go with my original idea, which was an inflatable packer. And as far as I know, Tyler's packer didn't do anything. It just was. I think I would have done a great job making a Packer commercial, but I would rather not do it and let Bobby do it than to feel like I was directly competing with him as well. I know we're in competition together, but like in my mind, I want to see the two drag kings. There's only two of us, you know, out of a cast of 12, there was only two kings and I want us both to do well and to excel because I want that positive representation out there. I was, of course, I was like, do what you feel confident in because I don't want you to like put something out there that isn't you because you changed it for me. But now <laughs> I feel like I have to change it. So I had to like enlist the help of a friend. I was like, look, man, what the hell does Tylenol sell? They were like, uh, Tylenol is selling us, um, I don't know, gender. And I was like, okay, no, I can get behind that. I can get behind that. I am selling you gender. And so that's how I came up with the idea for my product. I'm not confident in it because it was literally like, you know, come up with the idea, make the product and write the script all in like two hours maximum, less than, and get into drag at the same time and then start filming while Everything else in my life was very stressful already. Um, it was not. It was not ideal. I don't really feel confident in what I produced this round. Uh, I wasn't able to do what I wanted to do for my runway, and I'm worried that my runway is too cosplay, like just too straight up cosplay, and not dragged up enough. I think I did my best under the circumstances, but I do not feel confident in my placement and if i'm like in the bottom two i don't feel confident in my lip sync so we'll see what happens i know my brand better than anyone and even if this product wasn't my brand the way it's all about the way i sell it and i think that tyler didn't need to change his i think that we could have shown how different our brands are by how different we we sell a similar product ended up making me late we all both ended up late. Time management's always been an issue. I have severe ADHD and even when medicated, I definitely can be time blind. I wish I was better 
about it. I think that this competition has helped me a bit. I wasn't able to film till the Tuesday that things were due. Uh, and I started editing and my body was just falling asleep and I, I kept getting up and running around and I just kept falling asleep. I feel so bad. Susan has to keep editing things for me. So Bobby is, I think officially my drag child now. So as a mother, I have an obligation to make sure that my child does the best work that they can. So I am behind Bobby with a ruler, just what? every time he does something that I don't particularly like. And he's here now and he's succeeding and I stand by repeatedly hitting him. This is a branding challenge and an entertainment challenge. I am far and away, not to sound cocky, I'm very branded. My brand is identifiable. I see my brand as very menacing, being intelligently stupid, something that's absolutely idiotic to an untrained eye, but if you pay enough attention, you're like, wait a minute, she's acting stupid, but that was really smart. So I came up with Susan's mystery box because I have a question mark in my name, which is right there at the end. You couldn't, ah, oh, God damn it, Dr. Kisses, you're a fucking asshole. I have a question mark at the end of my name. Therefore, people are going to expect a little mystery. And I thought, hmm, a product you don't know what it is. Ah, perfect, genius, never been done before. L g oh, gaze, here you go. They're gonna fucking love it. But then I thought, hmm, you know what would be more camp? Let's try and make it a real thing because what would be intelligent but also stupid? Making a parody idea into a sellable product. And that's camp. For this week's runway, I was actually really excited because I am such like a pop culture fanatic just in general. I initially wanted to do White Diamond from Steven Universe because she is just so kind. Obviously that did not pan out because of time constraints. All right, y'all. So since I'm moving, I have literally no drag. Everything I own is in the storage unit. We're struggle bustling so hard and I cannot stress that to y'all enough. So now, I have the task of digging through this whole storage unit to find my Princess of War dress. So pray for me that I find this dress and I have something to wear. Cause if I don't, I mean, I'm already getting dark points. So I mean, whatever, I'm not gonna win, but at least I know the lip sync song. So y'all bitches better be praying. I just didn't know really what to do. I, I, I was reading like commercial challenge. It's about personality. And I was like, okay, a look is not going to save me. Visuals are not going to save me this time. It is myself who's going to save me. And I think I really needed a talk, workroom talk with Zelda. And I think I was the only person who used this kind of advantage because she really helped me. I was like scrapping three scripts I had for my commercial for the main battle. And yeah, she helped me very much with it. I, I feel very confident going into week four now. I just have to be myself a little bit more. Like when I started filming, filming my commercial, I was automatically putting on a character that wasn't really Titanic. I was like talking in a different voice. I was like, oh my God, this is titties by Titanic, but that's not Titanic. Titanic doesn't talk like that. Titanic talks like I'm talking right now. Let's not remind people of week two where I tried to be a character that did not work out. I think the Titanic Donovan brand is still evolving. You know, I'm like a chameleon. I, I, I wanna be able to do everything that I want. So I think that is the Titanic Donovan brand. It is actually harder than I thought this competition, but I'm also doing better than I expected. Like, especially my runway game, Drag Duel, is pushing me, not even to my limits. I, I don't really have discovered my limits yet because every week, every runway, the music video, every challenge, I'm doing something even better than last week. Like I'm surprising myself, like I'm doing my little runway sketches. When, when I did it in, in week one, I was like, okay, draw something that you can actually do. I'm at a point where I'm drawing everything I want and I'm just doing it. I, I, think, I think I always knew that I got it. I just had to start doing it, you know? Because I always had the concepts and the visions in my head. Now I'm able to do actually what I want to do. Now I'm able to show what my drag is really. I think the She Needs a Brand is a big flashing lesbian sign. I think the She Needs a Brand is very sapphic. It's very women loving women. And I exude 
femininity but also love femininity and I think all of that wrapped into one is what makes Shinita Shinita and it's in my name so it's kind of part of my brand it has to be I was just wanting to put that into a product that kind of highlighted me as Shinita but also me out of drag something that I could personally use like out of drag obviously our winning the first challenge put me at ease a little bit but ever since then it's kind of been downhill so like I've had times where I've thought maybe like my drag isn't received as well as I thought it is like maybe like my drag isn't really that good but when I have those thoughts or when I you know start to think negatively about myself as a performer all I have to do is think about the really really good and positive critiques that I get from my actual community like the gigs that I get booked at again and again and I really have to remember that what the judges see like is only a portion of she needs a woman it's not me as like my entirety so I, I kind of have to remember that and not take it too seriously or take it too harshly on myself apparently um the tea is that a lot of people were late and in my opinion girl I don't know like how are you gonna be I don't know I'm also I'm also a procrastinator but like I still get my shit done in in on time I leave everything for like the last three days so <laughs> but I still get it in and we also had an extension so like what's what's happening there what what's happening over there it kind of feels like when like when the teacher comes in and says in my 25 years of teaching i have never dealt with a class like this except you you're the good one like it feels like i'm the good one in the class of like okay none of this applies to me so you guys can get in trouble all you want i'm sitting pretty this challenge was the easiest challenge we've had so far so i don't know why people were late it was annoying to me like, I benefited from the extensions, extension as well because I got to work on my costume and the audition a bit more. But I would have had an, everything on time, as well, like, even if uh, the deadline was kept to be Saturday. I'm glad for people, like, great, you get to, like, finish what you're doing. Uh, but it's really annoying me that uh, every week there is an issue, every week someone misses something, we get extensions, someone doesn't submit on time. Like, I, I don't like that. I think people are getting lazy. There need to be more boundaries, there need to be more rules that we have to follow because um, right now, like this is the first time people are getting consequences for turning in something late, you know? Okay y'all, uh, I just found the skirt, so pray to god the bodice is in here. Sorry, could you No one was talking to you, bitch. I literally have never worn this. Like, she's gorgeous. No, that's not it. Please. <gasps> I think I see it. Come on. Come on. Yes. We found it. Okay, she needs a real easy Do you see the way my life is falling apart? I have to end this video right now. We got it. <laughs> Now it is time for commercials. If you like what you see, make sure to tip these performers. Their payment info will be featured at the bottom of the screen during their commercial. Are you a little guy who needs help feeling like a big guy? Are you an unintentional master of hiding in plain sight? I can't believe Bobby didn't show up. Denise, I live here. Well, do I have the products for you? Bobby Uranus's jam-packed amplifying packer has tons of uses. So 
sword fighting. <laughs> Getting rid of unwanted attention. Hey, baby. Oh, shit. And it's perfect for skipping those long lines at the bar. And if you ever feel like being perceived as too much to handle, cleanup is a breeze. Bobby Uranus' jam-packed amplifying kit packer comes in three rockin' colors. Penis peach. Oh Half chub chocolate. And go fuck yourself. Call 1-800-BIG-D-BOY to order yours today. But wait, if you call now, we'll circumcise it for you. Absolutely free. So puff out that sex little guy and show you're a big guy where it matters. I think it was, um... A little flaccid. I am like really, really glad that I did not do a packer because if we were being compared to each other, Bobby's idea was way better. His execution was way better. His script was way better. Give it to me like. Designed with every makeup wearer in mind, introducing the Da Vinci Artistry brush set. Featuring 12 unique brushes for face, eyes, and lips. Instantly glamorize any look from low impact to high pigment. This professional grade brush set is essential for anyone wanting to step up their own makeup look. Your makeup will have everyone saying, she's painted. Brush number 23 is perfect for small eye areas. While brush number 69 will get you good top to bottom. And by that I mean it's great for applying highlighter to the face and the body. Brush number 96 is perfect for getting the perfect pouty lip. And brush 847Y2K Elemental OP is perfect for getting the flawless base of your dreams. Get the Da Vinci look. Available now. Christy, I think yours is so funny in that it's so self-serious but also kind of aloof at the same time. The best like commercial, but it's just a, it's just a commercial. Christie's commercial looks beautiful. The jokes in it were the same three jokes over and over. The same exact joke three times. It, your commercial, it felt like a teaser trailer. Like it was just giving you a taste of something before there's more. And I've honestly kind of, gotten that vibe from you all season that it's just kind of like yeah this is pretty this is really nice this is well put together but like what what else i've got ad blocker and i skipped them so i would have skipped the shit out of that if i could have christy i'm so sorry do you feel like you're the boiled chicken breast in your friend group get some taste the best white powder since well never mind oh hi i didn't see you there i was just stirring the pot and cooking up some drama as I do. It's so delicious and you know why? Because it has taste. With taste you won't be doing plain old boring drawings anymore. The only Da Vinci I know is Christy. With taste you'll be making modern art. Oh! It might be the wrong side but who cares? No one's gonna say anything anyway because they're afraid of sounding stupid. Thanks taste. With taste, you'll be turning these. Oh, isn't she so precious? Into these. Oh, isn't she so much nicer now? And she's quiet too. Thanks, taste. Taste can fix many questionable choices, such as these. Well, not even taste can fix this shit. Get out! Well, I guess you could say she needs a taste. Thanks, Taste. Taste has been endorsed by multiple celebrity consumers, such as... Hello, it is international superstar Vanya. They told me if I say I like taste, they will let me taste hamburger. I like taste. Where is my hamburger? Available for purchase exclusively on Goop with a complimentary bussy scented candle on the first 100 purchases. So get some taste, cause you all have none. Side effects of overconsumption include being called a nasty elitist
Hydra is one of the people I thought went too far with her comedy. I think they should have been more focused on the actual product. I guess it was very on brand in that Hydra is a bitch and she has poor line delivery, so... I could not remember what product she did. And for someone whose idea was taste, I was like, oh. Hey there, Space Cats. Orbit here, coming at you from Shopping Port 3. Packing for a trip, but your clothes won't fit. Dealing with extra bags, but the fees leaving you gagged. Well, let me introduce to you the latest installment in the Orbit's whole line of products. Orbit's Wormhole. A luxury luggage case that can hold anything, much like your trusty tote bag, but can travel with you without the physical hassle. Just connect it to your mobile device, set it to your desired location, and watch as it teleports across the cosmos. And don't just take my word for it. Here are some customers who are raving about my wormhole. I was panic packing mere hours before my space shuttle launch, but luckily I had Orbit's wormhole, which took my huge load with ease. I really didn't have the money to spend on extra bags. I'm so glad I had Orbit's wormhole to freely teleport my meteor collection. They're my only friends. I accidentally sent my freeze-dried amputated like so Ryan's belt and they got stolen, but it did force me to get a sick hoverboard, so five stars. After hearing those glowing reviews, how could you say no to my wormhole? For just $39.95 Goober dollars, you can order my wormhole at www.forwardshole.com. Or if you call right now, I'll throw in my original black hole at no extra cost. That's a $4 value at nearly 10 times the price. Stay tuned for more of the Orbit's whole line of products being transmitted your way. This has been Orbit at Shopping Port 3. Over and out. Branding wise, Orbit, I think you did the best job out of all of us. Orbit's commercial was exactly what she needed to give us. She gave us everything. Are you tired of feeling oppressed? Do you want the courage to punch a bigot? Well, you're in luck, you pathetic cuck. Hello, hola, bonjour, and hi. It is Rosa Gold here, bringing you the newest and most potent product from Gold Labs, Inc. It is Rosa's Gold Rush. For all your Republican uncle, devil's advocate white guy, and condescending twink needs. See, we all gotta find our inner drag superhero in these trying times. So I thought, why not make it easy for the children? All you gotta do is puff. Puff. And poof, boom. You're ready to fight hate and bigotry everywhere. These sad, oppressed, and marginalized little fags needed just a little push. And Rosa Gold's Huff and Puff anti-bigot poppers were right there to help. Well, you know, scientifically, biologically, anatomically, men and women are just not the same. It's time to show these bigots that we queers, we fight back. OMG, ew. No facts, no femmes. What part of that don't you understand? And yeah, we speak up for hatred everywhere. All you gotta do is puff, puff, and puff. You know what, Jason? Nobody gives a shit. You wanna know another thing? How about you take your Ben Shapiro, Ted Cruz, Andrew Tay looking ass right back to where the fuck you came from, you motherfucking piece of shit. How about, where the fuck do you think you, come right back here, you fucker. Listen here, you cis white twink. I don't care how fish you think I am, but it's faggots like you that make me want to burn the house down boots. For real. Come here, you fucking cheesy cock loving f For a tantalizingly low fee, you too can get off your miserable, marginalized behind and stick it to the man. And remember, trans rights are human rights, queer people fight back, and tip your local queens. Besos. This ad was paid for by Rosa Gold for Congress. Or Parliament or whatever the fuck will have her. Rosa's ad was actually great. Like, it was Rosa's personality in the ad. Even though she was like her normal self, like a little bit a character, and then it was, boom, I'm Rosa, bitch. But that's what it's about. Like, she turned herself into, boom, Rosa, bitch, you know? I loved this commercial. I thought it was funny as hell. Uh, I would buy those poppers. Uh, <laughs> Hi, I'm She Needs a Woman. And if you do too, you know how hard it can be. Is she queer? Is she straight? Is she flirting with me or is she just being friendly? Does she want to be with me or does she want to be like me? You've asked these questions countless times. Well, no more. Ladies, 
Let me introduce you to Shanita Woman's Queer Femme Finder, the number one queer women product out now, and currently the number one best-selling product among lesbians. Am I barking up the wrong tree? How can I possibly know? You no longer have to ask these questions because the answer will be clear. Let's look at one of our customers now. Women never approach me because they don't think I look queer enough and I'm always falling in love with unattainable straight girls or assuming queer women just want to be my friend. That was until last week when I bought Shanita Woman's Queer Femme Finder. Now I'm moving in with my girlfriend. We've just adopted a cat and I'm proposing next week. Thank you, Shanita Woman. So beautiful. And that could be you with Shanita Woman's Queer Femme Finder. Find out if that woman is queer or not with She Needs a Woman's Queer Femme Finder. She Needs a Woman's Queer Femme Finder is compatible with all suffixes, including lesbians, bisexuals, non-binary and trans people. She Needs a Woman's Queer Femme Finder has many side effects, including but not limited to you hauling, dinner parties, fur babies, engagements and an inability to stop talking about your relationship. Get She Needs a Woman's Queer Femme Finder today. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was certainly not into the ads. I feel like it didn't work. It just, it didn't seem like it flowed well, but the biggest part was that it, it felt like, like you weren't comfortable in the brand. i um, not really sure what I walked away as the brand being, but there was no comfort there. I think Shanice's commercial is great. As a lesbian, it's like so accurate. <laughs> What's missing from your life? What's that thing you're forgetting? Was your dad lying when he said he was going to pick up milk? Hi, I'm Susan. Sometimes life throws a lot of questions at you and you don't have the answers. Where is Carmen San Diego? And if she was from Africa, why was she white? If you want to scratch the ever-present itch for answers, then you need Mystery Box by Susan. For a negligible bee, you can definitively say, I know what's in this box. Susan gave me her credit card information. Thanks, Susan. My mystery box had my dad in it, and he finally brought the milk. No more dry cereal for me. And don't you worry, whores. We do payment plans, too. I got the mystery box by Susan Payment Plan, and she sent me a horse. Only two more payments until I get the skull and the last leg. Hey, it's Denise. Susan sent me a new roller derby helmet. How did she know I needed one? Whenever you order a mystery box by Susan, your order is personalized with an extensive questionnaire. So for just $19.95 a minute, you too can enjoy adding a little mystery to your life. Order your mystery box at www.strangeways.com. That's right, bitch. This shit's fucking real. So what are you waiting for? Order yours today. Mystery box by Susan. Huh? Buy a box from here. Susan's commercial is just so fucking Susan. It's exactly susan it is stupid it is weird who can fight with something that's already being sold i mean susan's sense of humor was obviously clear throughout the entire commercial a lot of the times that was being delivered by people other than susan though do you have no sense of style titties can help you with that is your profession not really working? Titties can help you with that. Do you have dry, itchy red skin? Yeah. Ew. That's gross. What the fuck? But what even is Titties by Titanic, you might ask? Rescued by five brave men. Oh, oh wait, I'm losing you. I got you, Gen Z. Rescued by five very brave, very rich men who went down to the almighty Titanic in a submarine to get you this one-of-a-kind item. Titanic's trash bags. You can use titties as a fashion accessoire. 
just like this very fashionable headband. Or just take a look at my business type. So business. You can suffocate drag girl judges because of stupid critiques. Just like being safe in a row for two times. <laughs> like trash. Because we all can do something to save the world. You see, titties is actually for everyone. Drag queens, drag kings, drag aliens, drag kings or queens or aliens with mustache or not identifying objects. It's even for you. Yes, you. With the ugly ass red itchy face. You get a trash bag, you get a trash bag, and even you get a trash bag. So why be a drag queen when you can be a trash queen? Titties by Titanic have all been planted in your homes all around the world. Don't ask us how we did that though. Titanic makes clearly no money out of this because she is such a genuine person. When you need a refill, just message us and we will tell you to visit your local store for a new bag of Titties by Titanic. This advert was presented to you by... Who cares? Titanic, I feel like sometimes you just go so far out of it to try and be like so like um, I'm so quirky I'm so different because I'm an artsy little German kid But this week you were just you and you exuded that like kind of like snobby artsy But also like wink wink nudge nudge kind of vibe and so uh, Love it love it love it love it. I really like the commercial the commercial is well put together I felt like it was funny even though like again like the challenge wasn't comedy But comedy always helps and I felt like it was a really good job Hi, have you ever just thought, I look terrible? Because I know you have. And do I have the solution for you? One of Trisha's BMX looks. Do you ever just wanna surf pussy? Do you ever wanna be cunt? Do you ever wanna just do a backflip? Well, you can, in a custom creation by me. Every single look is hand measured by myself. I make sure that I take every measurement that's needed. Every. Oh, is that one necessary? Very necessary. Oh, oh, okay. Every single look is customizable, going from anywhere from shapes to your name. I make sure that every single person has a little touch of themselves in each outfit. It's not so often you find something so high quality that is just handmade. I mean, look at how happy our customers are. That could be you giving a gift to someone. And don't worry, in this line, we have room for everyone. The spooky, ooky, and kooky. And we got all sizes covered. There's so many customers. And look at how good they finally look. If you want to serve a look and you aren't sure how, just call Trisha Can, she will turn you out. So the funniest moment in Trisha's commercial was definitely unintentional, and it's when she says... It's not very often that you find something that's just so high quality that it's just handmade. <laughs> I just, I don't, I don't know. It was cute and funny. I really wish she added some background music because it was a little bit like, like dry. I feel good because I know one of the prompts was to not be a character. And I feel like when watching them, I was one of the few people who wasn't a character. I was myself the whole time and I very much was true to myself and like the silliness of me. But I feel like some people really took on the character of doing commercial characters and maybe weren't themselves as much as I know them to be. Hi gay, I'm Tyler Knoll. You might remember me from the back corner of the bar you were at last Friday. Today, I'm here to tell you about a product so groundbreaking, RuPaul Charles himself tried to buy out our company to help with his fracking operation. No, no, not that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> now, you may have heard that gender is a construct, but that's just a leftist agenda. It is actually a renewable energy source that we here at Gender Sequoia have learned to harness. Introducing the brand new Gender Bender 5000. This product allows you to embrace, embody, and experience all aspects of gender with just one part of it. But how does it work? Well, these satellite receptors here collect the unused gender from non binary people, which is then transformed into a kind of gender fluid in this chamber right here. Then at the tip, it's transformed into a gas, which can be taken orally. 
or So buy today for only three installments of $18.95 or a couple of dick pics. I'm into that. Gender? I hardly know her! It's just not maybe the most engaging video. I feel like his like cadence is really engaging and I feel like he's like talking like with conviction, which is nice. Um, and I like the idea of the product, but I just couldn't remember it to save my life. Honestly, and especially since uh, there's a lot going on, I, I, I think Good one. Oh wow, that was actually amazing. I'm scared for myself as a judge. No, I'm actually gonna place an order for some of these items. Like that slate, that slate, that slate. But now it is time for our contestants to bring it up on the runway. And category is as seen on TV. So for this runway, I am doing Chelsea from Fish Hooks, and I wanted to give her a little bit of an 80s-esque twist and be this kind of cunty, bitchy mall girl, but she's still really helpful and you still really like her. Um, she's totally tubular, very radical, and yeah, girl. Go take a bubble bath, have a latte, sip some chai tea. We'll hook up later. Here's my card. This week I'm cosplaying as Belle, and though I don't consider myself to be the most femme of people, if this is what femme is, then I love it. I've always really related to the character of Belle, being an outcast, being like there's no place that's really my home, kind of feeling like I'm floating around all the time, and having a taste for the macabre and a, a chip in my shoulder. This dress means so much to me, and I've been working on it on and off since 2019, adding more and more volume to it to make it the biggest, puffiest skirt you can imagine. Beamian from Planet Glamtron. I wanted to pay tribute to Nichelle Nichols playing Ahura, which pushed black excellence in television. And oh wait, is that Mirror Universe Ahura? And damn, does she look deep space fine? What can I say? A dark lady serving the stars. For my runway this week, I'm doing Audrey 2. I'm doing one of my favorite villains in the entire world, and villains are like my biggest inspiration in drag. I have a show here in Serbia that I did inspired by villains where every queen comes out as a villain. I made the entire look by myself. From head to toe, I stoned the entire look. I'm so, so happy. I think it's so fashionable, but so campy at the same time, and I think it's my favorite look that I've ever done. girly teen girl and just because I'm late to this slumber party does not mean you should sleep on me. I'm the hottest slut from far awayville and the hottest bitch on this runway. So when Pearl asked me, do I have something on my face? I said, yeah bitch, barnacles. Gender bent Ellen Ripley from the Alien franchise with this incredible 3D printed replica flamethrower by my friends at Make or Die Solutions here in Seoul. And this is just a very straightforward cosplay. Oh, wait, no, it isn't! Because this is the Tyler Knoll show, and I am always gonna keep it sexy, sleazy, and fucking stupid. I'm paying homage to one of my favorite Tim Burton characters, Cobb's Pride. 
I spray painted and stoned this $30 secondhand wedding dress I got online. With it I'm working this blue hair with roses and thorns and of course a cute wedding bouquet. This week's runway, I'm giving you trans-coated princess Aurora. Growing up, I always found so much strength in Disney princesses and I related a lot to their stories. And I wanted to bring that to this runway because I feel like even though this isn't what I initially wanted to do, this is still one of my favorite looks and I'm super proud of it. I made it all myself, of course. Make it pink, make it blue. How about both? Because we don't define gender. We don't let it define us. <laughs> That's right, I am bringing you the one, the only, America's favorite mom, Marge Simpson, serving you mother this week. I have made this huge hair, have sewn a little bit of this dress, and have given you that absolutely fantastic, fabulous yellow fantasy. Again, be sure to tip the contestants who featured your favorite runway looks. The judges have scored the contestants based on their commercial, they can get up to 60 points, and based on their runway, they can get up to 40 points. Taking averages of those points, we got our placements. And before we do reveal the scores, we just want to say congratulations to all the warriors. You did such a fabulous job this week and you are truly making our job as the judges hell. Like, it's not enough that I'm with Derek and Zelda in this. I actually now have to nitpick every single one of you. And also, it has to be mentioned, some of you did receive penalty points for submitting your challenges late or going over assigned challenge time. In the fairness to other competitors, appropriate penalty votes have been given and that did impact the results. So you better watch out for the next time for this not to repeat again. I feel like I did really well, but the minus 10 points for uploading a little late makes me nervous. Bobby Uranus, Trisha Can, Tyler no. Susan, you all are safe. I'm safe. Oh, I'm safe. Oh, thank goodness I'm safe. Great job this week. You move on to the next round. Now it is time to judge our tops and bottoms of the week. And we are excited to welcome to the judging panel one and only online sensation. Bible Girl! Welcome to our judges panel. The iconic, the amazing, the winner of RuPaul's Drag Race seasons 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. Bible Girl! It's Bible Bitch! Thanks so much for having me, Drag Duel. Thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate it. Such a pleasure. Pleasure is all mine. I mean, you are the branded bitch of Twitter, so if anyone is gonna be here to like judge this challenge, like you are the perfect person for it. I've got my Twitter fingers at the ready, King. <laughs> We're going to kick it off right from the jump. First up, we have Christy Da Vinci. So Christy did the makeup brushes, and I think that this video looked the most like a commercial. Like if this was on, TikTok, on Twitter, on anything, I wouldn't even bat an eye. Like, it looks so professional. I like that she threw in a couple jokes with like the numbers of the brushes. I think that it was lacking a little bit of personality and something we would want in like a branding moment. Like we want to see you. And this was more about the effects and like the Photoshop and the editing and less about Christy. This challenge was to sell us a product. These makeup brushes were not anything special. I feel like if you're going to take something as generic as makeup brushes as a drag queen, 
and try to sell them as your own, there needs to be something that makes them, like, why do I want these makeup brushes over any other makeup brushes? Why do I want Christy Da Vinci's makeup brushes? And I didn't get that from the commercial. I disagree with the both of you. I did sense a lot of Christie's voice and POV through this commercial. And I think although there was a lot of post-production editing involved, I think it was a very good um, example of how to do a streamlined, but really like um, substantial amount of editing without feeling like it was the kitchen sink being thrown at it. Based upon how her application's giving the give, I think I might need to have some of these brushes. However, Christy did fall into the category of people who lost points due to being late this week, and that did affect her score, especially in the week where everybody did so well. Moving on to Christy's runway, this was a great look. It was. It was it was simple, it was clean, it was polished, it was on theme. My issue was I didn't know who it was. And when I first saw it, I'm like, oh, it's just probably from like a show or something, I don't know. Um, and then she was like, it was Princess Aurora. I was like, I, I didn't get that. <laughs> like, I, I think now, like hearing it, I see it, but I never would have guessed Princess Aurora if she wouldn't have told me. I will say the hair was giving me a little bit more Princess Peach. Like that's, that was my first thought when I saw it. And I was like, oh no, it's Aurora. Cause I like took a closer look at like, you know, the, the dress is very recognizable, at least to me as a Disney adult. That look just wasn't it for me. I wish she went bigger. I wish it was a dragged out version of the look. And unfortunately we did have another performer do a Disney princess in the cast and they just did it better. And that's why Christie's version kind of felt short. I wish she like dragged it up, like big hair, big gown, like put a pillow behind your head. So it's like referential to the who character is, but also dragged up. Here's the through line, you know, it's it's the, the package of Christy Da Vinci is clean, simple, but elevated execution. And I feel like that's definitely what this look brought. When you put it objectively up against the other contestants' runways, it does read smaller. Next up, we have Hydra. I have to say, how has Zanny's bro or taste? Because Hydra really did the damn thing. You know, Hydra is the self-appointed villain of the season. So the fact that she made this whole commercial, like playing that up was so funny. She is pulling references from other episodes like Shanitza's AliExpress zebra outfit. I mean, she was pretty scathing in some of the reads and she's using everything that people are, are saying in the comments and instead using that as like a form of comedy rather than taking it to heart. So funny. This was one of my absolute favorites of the week. So Hydra did take our critiques and she improved the editing. However, I think she went way overboard. I really didn't like the editing. I think it took away from the video a bit. Like the shots of the painting rotating and her entire skin rotating with it. That just made me more confused and I really didn't like the editing. I think it was overdone. However, the product made perfect sense with who Hydra is, which is hateful. Moving on to Hydra's runway. The details were like just so top notch. The, the, the paneling, the intricacy of the silhouette that she constructed all really blended together in such a, a great harmony um, that it, it truly was hard to find a negative criticism. I love this. My favorite part of this look is when you look at it up close and you see all the little stoning details, she went so meticulous, as she always is. Hydra has such incredible attention to detail. She is going to give you an outfit that is 110% finished every single time. It was broken down character that was still recognizable. The makeup was everything. The mug was a mugging. And then the dress, the chaps, the reveal, everything just worked perfectly. I love Little Shop of Horrors. When she said she was going to do this look, I was so excited and she did not let my little gay heart down. I love the reveal. We had a lot of reveals on this runway and they were all really fun. Next up, we have Miss Orbit. Orbit actually had my favorite commercial out of all of them because it was so self-referential. Orbit is, I think, the best marketing queen of all of them because she does have a distinct brand. Orbit's commercial was edited perfectly. It looked polished. It looked like a real infomercial and I would buy Orbit's black hole. 
I would have to say Orbit's commercial, hands down, was my favorite. Just the innate ability Orbit has to facilitate peaks and valleys and just really inject so many different levels into one body of a singular project is really remarkable. It, it checked off every box and then some for me. I just really think Orbit has the sauce. This was really fucking awesome. I was obsessed with this commercial. I thought it was so well done. The, like, just the graphic design and the editing that went into it added to it so well. I think that she is the branded queen on this season and she a hundred thousand percent delivered. I feel like Christie's commercial is like 2023 ad. And this commercial was like waking up at 3 a.m. in 2005 kind of ad. She hit all the beats like those like stereotypical like ad beats, um, but she like made them all so funny. I loved all the little characters and the, all the names and all of the little like things that she added. Like it was very detailed and I thought it was just overall super, super fun. Moving on to Orbit's runway. This was one for me where I did find a lot of little details that I didn't really love. I thought the hair and makeup was stellar. I thought like the pieces of the look were all really great. But where she lost me were little things like um, the red top where I felt like that could have very easily just been pink and it would have made the whole look feel a lot more cohesive. And it was little things like I wish she had given us the belt. I wish there was a fin. It could have literally been cardboard spray painted. Like, I just think if you're gonna be a fish, there should be a fin. Next up, we have Miss Rosa Gold. This was everything to me and like she did have some comedic bits in there but like this was just her showing her personality this is her showing what her drag is what is important to her when she does drag i understood the pro the product i understood what it did i understood like why i would want this or why i would need this and i also think just her performance and like how she changed the mannerisms for each character I thought was really good and showed that she has some acting skills. One thing I didn't like is I felt like there was too much going on in a sense where I wish she would edit it down a bit. It felt like it was too much and in some places it felt like she sped it up because she wanted to meet the time limit. It was a struggle for her to edit her idea down and that's kind of a running thing with Rosa. But it did take a little longer to get to the product or like what the product's point was. Um, but much like Hydra's, once you got there, it stuck. This was a project that really did make me fall all the more in love with who Rosa Gold is. On the runway, oh my God, Rosa Gold looks stunning. That was a dragged out version of the character. And I just have one question. How does she live with herself with all of that glitter? Like the transition between the sequence and the tool looked so good because she just splattered glitter on it and it was like a seamless transition. But not knowing that she lives in an apartment unit, you know that that glitter is now everywhere. She's never getting it out. I mean, the way that she took this incredibly easily recognizable character and dragged it up in a way that was so perfect from head to toe, it was, it made perfect sense. Fun fact, she hand sewed that uh, tool skirt at the bottom and then added glitter to marry it into the sequin. Like that type of touch, that detail, that's the kind of thing that wins you in this competition. A character like Marge has such a high level of iconography that any detail that minute, large, doesn't matter, that is off, it could be one or several, it will throw off the entire look. And I feel like what Rosa did here was so successful to every umpteenth degree possible. Um, the makeup was gorgeous. Just like such an amazing drag interpretation of Marge that didn't feel homogenized and it felt so fresh. Next up, we have She Needs a Woman. I love the product. I love the design of the product. I love the little the little uh, lesbian flag colors around the magnifying glass. However, my big glaring issue with it is that I don't know how the product works. In her entire commercial, she didn't show us any demonstration of how it works. There was no explanation behind it. It was just, this product will help you know if a woman is queer slash into you. She asked the same questions over and over again, which was funny at first, and then it kind of got a bit too repetitive. Well, first off, 
selling a magnifying glass, you will be hearing from my lawyer, Shanitza. I think that Shanitza has an issue with pacing because that was one of the issues in her Mary Jane Holland video. It was just kind of like a little bit slow and, and awkward at points. And I feel like that was kind of an issue here. Like we would finish a scene and then there would be like a pause and then she would start the new scene. But like, I just felt like it kind of like killed the flow of the commercial. We need show, not tell. I think the branding still came across. Um, I think the one note that I had that was like, I guess like the highest negative, um, and maybe I misinterpreted, but I think it took a while for her to say the product's name. And once yeah. she did say it, then she was repeating it, but it really did take a second for us to get there. The opening line, I'm Shanitza woman, and if you do too, that was so funny and so smart and so on brand. However, the execution of it just fell short. Just comparing it to other performers, it didn't stack up for me. I wish there was more product shots. I wish there was more dynamic editing. I wish there was more going on in the commercial. Comparing it to everything else I saw, unfortunately, it was my least favorite. On the runway, I love that Shanitza elevated it. The shoulder details, the fabric choice, everything worked. I loved the corset, I loved the little color, everything was on point, but I really didn't like the hair. I wish the hair was more sculpted, like the original character, or at least more dragged up, because this did look kind of like a shake and go. I don't think it's giving Judy Jetson, and I also don't really think it's giving Shanitza. So it's just kind of like, okay, like, I don't understand the choices that were made. The makeup was giving me like dark glamour and I wanted like that bright round 60s eye and the hair was just very, very flat. More than anyone else in this cast, Shaniza has that X factor. She has the it factor. She is a star. She just, if she's going to continue doing competitions, she needs to figure out how to apply that, like that spark that she has to every single thing that she does, every single challenge. Once she does that, she will be literally unstoppable. Last but not least, we have Miss Titanic Donovan. The commercial, I loved the product. I thought this was so creative and very, very on brand for Titanic. Because like when I think of Titanic, I think of these crazy elaborate looks that she makes out of cardboard garbage scraps of fabric and just like turns it into these masterpieces. Oh my God, this was such a good week for Titanic. His commercial was funny. It was relevant. It was referential. He also made fun of the judges, which I loved. And also the product makes sense. It was trash bags and Titanic's drag is trash. That's what you get for talking shit about the judges. But in all seriousness, Titanic had one of my favorite commercials this week. The first two notes I have are that her look for the commercial, gorgeous, perfect, amazing. Um, and there were just like infinitely great levels of comedic beats that did not feel forced. They felt super organic. It, she literally was just like going from one bit to the next bit to the next bit to the next bit, but it never felt like it was too much. It never felt like, oh my gosh, I don't know what's happening. Like she really like carried us along for this entire journey and I was just enjoying it the entire time. Moving on to Titanic's runway. Bitch, are you fucking kidding me? Are you literally kidding me? This was my favorite look of the whole season, and it, it is not close. The hair, the makeup, the, the dress, the way that she spray painted and stoned that thrifted wedding dress to make it feel like it was like a one of a kind piece, the, the bouquet of flowers. I loved everything about this. What I really loved about it is that it was not only immediately recognizable, but it didn't, it did not feel like it was this direct one-to-one -one interpretation while also simultaneously not losing its core of what the look was supposed to be. For the full unedited judges critiques, do subscribe to the Drag Duel Patreon linked down below. Hydra, congratulations, you are safe. Rosa Gold, great job this week, you are safe. Back in the top, where I should be. It feels right, and it feels very, very right. Yeah, take that one point deduction. Nobody can stop Rosa Gold. I mean, I assume at least a couple of people here can stop Rosa Gold, but not yet, because she's on the top and you're not. I mean, some of you are, so, ah! <laughs> Orbit, you 
are safe. Okay, uh, well, great. I love when I think I'm gonna win and then people do good. Literally so fucking annoying. That shit is so fucking annoying. Uh, I just wanna, I literally just wanna win. Like I literally just want app win. Titanic Donovan. Congratulations, you are the winner of this week's challenge. What? You win a cash prize of $100 and the chance to move on in the competition. Sorry, neighbors. What? Congrats, Titanic. Oh my goodness, I'm so proud of Titanic. I know they've really been wanting a win. They just tore this week up. Runway, challenge, both were phenomenal. Thank God I look good in drag. Oh my God. Ich hab gewonnen. Now that you are a front runner, you better watch out. There are some hungry bitches in the arena. And that unfortunately means that Christy Da Vinci and Shinizza Woman you are the bottom two queens of the week. Not two winners, not two challenge winners in the bottom. I, I'm so shocked. I can't believe Christy's in the bottom. I mean, I guess I see it. I know that she did have a late penalty and I feel like her personality didn't get to shine through her commercial. I do think hers is the most commercial, but I'm glad she's in the bottom. I'm so scared for my sister. So, I'm in the bottom two this week, and to be honest, I'm, I mean, I'm annoyed, of course, but I'm like, I understand, like, I had to be late because of everything going on, and I'm like, it's a competition, at the end of the day, like, it has to be fair, just because I have all this shit going on in my personal life doesn't mean that I should be given automatically all this grace, and it sucks to be kind of kicked when you're already down, but I'm like, I already told y'all, I'm a lip synker. If I have to lip sync for my life, I'm ready to do so. Sorry, Christy, I want you gone. And now it is time for two of you to lip sync in the drag duel to the debt to RuPaul's song, Give Them Just What They Want. It sucks that it has to be Shanitza and me. It makes me sad. I really like Shanitza. And like, she's been such like a joy in this competition. And I feel like, uh, it's just so booger. It just feels so booger. I'm like, my girl is in the bottom with me. I'm in the bottom in the first place in a week that I had to fight for my life. Let the drag duel begin. Boom, check it, boom. We open in the doors, taking applications. We scope out the floors of the room. She focus on the floor, potential sensation. The Bella du jour trying to bloom. She hoping for some more coin just for the ball, but she ready for the wartime. Fire resides inside her, the fever. Got an open mind, but she always keep up. Eyesight set on the limelight, hides the shine by day, highness by night. My climb high, she pines for the high life. Might be my kind, might be the right type. Serving looks, giving life, quite divine. She's the highlight of my night. I just might confide in her outside. I have a mind to ride with her all night. See you let it out. I know you wanna, they wanna see you go all. I know you wanna work. You know I am in business. Come, let's give them just what they want. They wanna see you hurt. They wanna see you let it out. They wanna see you go all. You know I am in business. Come, let's give them just what they want. They wanna see you hurt. Child, but it ain't for the dip top. No shame, fan, don't need the fig leaf. Wigs get snatched, bring me the wig thief. No team, no shade, no beef. But who is the drag commander in chief? Last I check, I'm still the boss. I paid the price, I paid the cost. Flashy flexing when I floss. Damn, she wrecks it when she walks. Machiavelli to the drop. Uh. They wanna see you let it out. They wanna see you go all. You know I am in business. Come, let's give them just what they want. They wanna see you. They wanna see you let it out.
Oh my God. That is how you perform. This is how you do a drag duel to the death. Congratulations to both of you. Such an amazing lip sync. Such a fabulous job. Now it is time to send one of you home. And that's going to be heartbreaking. But we have to do it. The judges have decided. Christy Da Vinci. You are safe. Lip syncing is a majority of what I enjoy to do. And I hope this shows the other girls that if you're landed in the bottom with me, you better be clutching your pearls because I'm not going anywhere. Not that easy. Which means she needs a woman. We are so sorry, but you are the next warrior that is eliminated from the competition. That elimination hits uh, hard. It's the first one of our winners to go home, the first international performer to be going home in the competition. And I think that's a big loss. Um, I think Shanidza had an incredible perspective here. She hasn't been doing this for long and she thrashed us in that first challenge, showed us all that she's about. I'm so, okay, I'm so happy that my indigenous sister, my indigenous sister, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm so happy that she's back and um, she's still she's still here. She never left. Why did I say she's back? However, when it comes to when it comes to Queen Mother, when it comes to Queen Mother Shanidza, that is so it's so sad it didn't pan out because I genuinely, I genuinely love Shanidza. And she's been so nice and so kind. I don't even know what to say. I feel so heartbroken. It hurts to see her hurting. She is the most amazing person. She's the love of my life. She's an incredible drag artist. And I think she didn't deserve this. She needs a woman. You are a star. You are amazing. You have the X factor. And this is just the beginning of your journey. We cannot wait to see you and your drag progress in the next couple of years. All stars maybe? Bye, Shanita. I, I love you. I love you so, 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 so much. So, bye, Queen. Shanita, I am very sad to see you go. I, ju I just know how upset you probably are right now, and I feel really bad about that. I love to see where you go in the future. Um, if you need help learning how to sew, you could call me. <laughs> so you're not doing AliExpress all the time. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That joke is beaten to death. Love you, Shanidza, and I'm excited to see where you go from here. I just feel like shit. Like, I think she deserves the world, and she deserves everybody to see her shine. Always have this overwhelming feeling that I just want to, like, put her in a bubble and protect her from everything bad in the world ever, and... It fucking sucks to see her heartbreak like that. And I don't know if I really want to do this anymore. I don't know if I want to do it without her. I'm moving forward and I'm not going to let it keep me down, even though it is like an annoying blip on my track record. But at the end of the day, I'm still an amazing competitor and I'm still here. Y'all bitches couldn't get rid of me that easy. I know everyone's so happy to see me in the bottom, aren't they? Everyone's so happy to see me in the bottom, aren't they? Well, it's not going to happen again. If you want to see all of our contestants lip sync to all of our lip sync songs throughout the season, that is all up on our Patreon. But other than lip syncs, there is a bunch of bonus content, unedited confessionals, full length lip syncs, full judges critiques, and bunch more. You also get to watch an episode a day early with us, the judges, and some contestants. Plus you get to support this production. So please go and join our Patreon. And a quick side note, if you want to have curves like Bootsy, go check out Planet Pepper. They have the best hip and boo pads for queens, as well as a bunch of other accessories that every drag performer needs for snatched body. You can use code Bootsy at checkout to get 10% off your entire order. And that concludes round four of the drag duo. Join us next week to see how our warriors are reacting to this elimination, especially Tyler Knoll. And you also get to hear what drama has been brewing in the Drag Duel Discord server. God knows there is some shady, shady, shady bitches in there.
that is it for this video. See you in the next one. Toodaloo. Toodaloo.